And welcome back to another show. I'm Mr. V from Mr. V's World here on YouTube. Before I get started, please subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. And rate this video. Thumbs up. Okay. Today, something kind of serious. Uh, I'm going to do a show about serial killers, power and control, or pure evil. Which is it? Yeah, you know, I wanted to do this one for a while, and the reason is I'm kind of fascinated. No, I'm not going to lie. I am fascinated by serial killers and the documentaries that I have viewed over some period of time because I want to know what gets in these crazy people's minds that they can do these very terrible, uh, almost unspeakable crimes. It's something that has actually bothered me for quite some time. And uh, I think I could probably say when I was a kid uh, growing up in the 70s, I recall seeing a bunch of magazines at 7-Eleven and perusing them through them. And they were crime magazines. And anyone who's over the age of 45 would know what I'm talking about. But anyway, these crime magazines were the, one of the first things you would see when you walk in the store. Because, they, of course, they always had some uh, kind of a sexual, sexy or sexualized woman and, of course, some guy who's manhandling her in some kind of way. And sure, it was provocative. That was the whole point. <laughs> and it was the 70s. You know, wouldn't see that today. There's no way these uh, covers of these crime detective magazines would look like that because women will be all over it and just forget about it. But that's another topic. And they should be. But um, I would just kind of sift through these magazines on the way to getting my Slurpee. And I found, I found myself being fascinated by them because they were true life stories. And I always uh, enjoyed biographies or anything that was factual, factually based. Uh, some of the stuff you couldn't make up that I was reading, you know, was, you might see in a horror movie. At any rate, the documentaries that I have been watching over the years have kind of uh, made me think hard you, uh, realizing that you don't know people. You think you know people, but you really don't know them 100%. And uh, I'll give you a case in point. This guy named Ed Camper, um, he's famous for being a serial killer. And when I was growing up in California in the 70s, this uh, Ed Camper guy was basically uh, kidnapping hitchhikers hippies, if you will, and co-eds. They called him the co-ed killer. You should look it up, actually. It's an interesting story. Story, Excuse me. Uh, anyway, this Ed Camper guy, basically, he was six foot nine, so he was a big man. Uh, when they caught him, caught up with him, he was 24 years old. He started, I think, when, around 22 or 23. I think that, yeah, 22 or 23. Basically, what he did was he uh, yeah, picked up hitchhikers and um, he murdered them eventually. But the thing about this guy was he did not fit the prototype of what a serial killer is supposed to have been about, you know, by his appearance and by his presentation. This is what makes things scary. Uh, Ed Kemper is and was, while well, he's still alive, a very, very well spoken, intelligent, articulate man, if you want to call him a man. I think he's a freaking animal or beast. But he pretty much slipped through the fingers of the cops when they finally caught up with him, and it was kind of by a fluke. You need to check into it. It's very interesting. Long story short, what this man did was he murdered, basically kidnapped and murdered six women, co-eds, uh, did very gruesome things to them. Uh, one person, he... Actually, two people, I believe, he decapitated, dismembered, and uh, another pair of people uh, were friends who were hitchhiking, college students, and they made the mistake of catching a ride with this guy, and both of their lives ended horribly. And then on top of that, to make matters worse, it's not like they can't get worse, right? Well, guess what? They can. He murdered his grandparents, shot them in cold blood. And then uh, he ended up killing his own mother. And when I got to that part in the documentary, I just, just a, a blank spot went in my head because what he did, 
uh, was very horrific in how he chose to do it. It was very, um, almost, it's like he calculated everything. Now, I watched the interview with him. Again, he's slightly charming. He can be, you can tell. A little bit aloof, but extremely articulate and very intelligent. And then the irony of this guy was uh, in a mental hospital at from age, I think it was, till the age of 22. So his late teens going up to 22, they released him because they felt he was no longer a threat to society, even though the reason why he went to the mental uh, facility in the first place was because he murdered his own grandparents with a gun. (sighs) Now, the thing about it, this guy, he got out of the mental hospital, hospital, excuse me, because he convinced them that he was not a problem. But the way he did it was rather smart. Is uh, since he was well spoken and well to do, and as far as how he presented himself, they gave him a trustee position, or position as a trustee at the hospital, which afforded him access to a lot of documentations on other patients in that hospital, which he learned how to basically psych out the doctors by telling them what they wanted to hear so he can get uh, out. In other words, he looked at the files of other uh, convicted killers and crazy people and understood the symptoms that he needed to display in order to appear to be sane versus insane. So that takes a certain amount of intelligence. So he was able to get out. But getting back to the overall premise, this is just only one person, you know, um, serial killer. There are are so many others. I see a a, a very, very distinct um, trait, a set of traits going on here with these serial killers, especially the males. They seem to be the majority in America, Caucasian, somewhere between the ages of you know, uh, early 30s to mid 40s. That pretty much fits the standardized profile. Uh, always, always, always something going on in the family structure at home, whether it be uh, some abuse, physical and or mental by either or parents, mother or dad, uh, a certain amount of alienation uh, that's experienced, especially at an early age in the latency years, you know, or in the, in the early development years, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and sometimes, of course, a broken home uh, family structure. So these kids are bottled up, I think, and then when they grow up, they release the kraken. Uh, another thing is, oftentimes you hear about post the fact when they're arrested that they used to torture animals and what lot, what not. Excuse me. I find it fascinating because these types of people live under our very noses. And I I warn my girlfriend from time to time, as I was warned by my own mom um, and my dad, but primarily by my mom, is to pay attention to your surroundings at all times. And I think most Americans or anyone who's listening to this could probably um, could probably say, yeah, that this is probably a good idea. You know, uh, some, you probably do concur because the way things are going right now, no one knows who's who. You know, we have military coming back home from Afghanistan or Iraq, and they're shooting up people left and right at army bases. Uh, You have kids that are demonstrating their anger and shooting up their fellow students. And you have um, just chaos. Now, are these people serial killers? More like rampage killers, Rambo killers, you know. But serial killers, they walk among us, amongst us, excuse me. I just ate some chocolate, so my mouth is a little bit... uh, caught up with something, but um, I, I do question, is this more something that is A, innate, or B, is it driven by outside forces that could be spiritual forces, 
Satan, demons, and or uh, environmental forces, you know, developmental forces. Uh, we can't really choose how we were raised, but I think that all of us have some sense of right and wrong. But I think the people that go out and kill innocent others and torture them and do awful things have a deeper pain. Uh, so deep that they can't discern between right, right and wrong and they just want to inflict more pain on others. So we don't know, you know, who's sitting next to us on a bus or who our coworkers are. A few of those documentaries I watched outside of Ed Kemper, um, some of these guys were married, you know, they were murdering prostitutes, picking up women on the street, picking up women, charming them at a bar, and then you know, getting getting them back into a closed space, and then uh, it was it was over. And any women listening right now, you know, if you're going to engage in getting into a car with someone you just met or don't know very well, always take a look around you and try to find where the exits are, uh, whether that's in a, someone's apartment or how to get out of the damn car. Because once you're in that car, it's it's almost a wrap. You know, I remember my mom telling me. She said, boy, if you ever, if you ever get taken by somebody or somebody pulls up next to you trying to offer you candy, for for one, you don't take it. And two, you don't get into the car. I don't care what you do. Do not get into the car. And if you if someone's drag, dragging you or grabbing on you, you scream. You scream as loud as you can and kick them in the nuts. So, <laughs> yep, that's the way to go. Um That's just the way to go. So I'm going to end this podcast. Serial killers. Are you guys uh, born evil or did uh, something make you that way? That's the question. What do you guys think? Chime on in. I hope you like the podcast. It's just me rambling about my thoughts. Take care of yourselves and be sure to subscribe and rate this podcast. Take care.